Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn. And if you're watching this video, it means you have heard or used neural networks in some of your machine learning project and you are also interested to know how neural network actually works. You might have also seen that in modern solutions in Kaggle or other competition portal, leading solutions use uh, neural network in one or the other form. And most of the neural net networks are nowadays implemented in TensorFlow or Keras uh, framework. So we will also cover end-to-end -end projects using TensorFlow Keras framework in this series. Okay, so that is why, you know, we are dedicating a complete series to neural networks and we will work on various projects uh, such as image processing to text analytics to audio signal processing. And as we progress, uh, we will also build a solid foundation so that we can use uh, neural networks in solving other problems in different industry scenarios. One of the key challenges that we have seen people face while working with neural networks is how to even create the input structure uh, so that we can feed it into neural networks, right? Uh, so those are the things we are going to cover and start with. Uh, we will also learn about various architectures in neural networks such as uh, commonly known as CNN, which is Convolutional Neural Network. Then we have RNN, Recurrent Neural Network. Then we have LSTM, very popular technique for time series modeling and uh, things which are dependent on time. So that will be long short term memories. We are also going to do a lot of pattern recognition techniques such as deep belief networks which uses restricted Boltzmann machines and many such uh, similar architectures. Uh, there are a lot to explore. However, keep in mind that even though the basic frameworks in neural network might look very similar, but we are still not at that level where one solution will work for multiple problems, right? Uh, which means that each of the machine learning problem needs a unique uh, neural network approaches. Uh, and that is why you will notice that CNN architecture is uh, different to the RNN and LSTM and so on. So let's get started. Um, we will start with a very simple problem statement, which is to understand uh, how neural network can learn a simple model like the digital AND gate, right? which you can see in the picture in front of you. As a human, we can very easily notice that in a two input logical AND gate, uh, whenever both inputs are one, the output is one. Otherwise, the output is zero if uh, one or both of the inputs are zero. Very simple, right? Now, this simple uh, model, uh, if we feed it into a neural network, uh, will it be able to learn from it? Similarly, we can have OR gates and also we will see that you know whenever we are dealing with things such as little bit more complex like exclusive OR gate, we will see what changes do we need to do to you know to make the structure of the neural network so that it can learn the underlying logic of little bit more complex things such as ZOR gates or also known as exclusive uh, OR, right? So now let's see can we use our you know neural network uh, to figure out all these uh, models right so in this case what i have done is i have seen many complex examples which starts with directly with identifying the different features to identify cats versus dogs i found it overly complex so i started with a very simple uh, logical end gate so that it most of us are familiar from our you know high school courses or even like a freshman courses in electrical engineering and so on and gate is a very simple thing to learn so we thought that we'll start with and gate and then we'll explain how neural networks are built around it okay so in and gate as i have already explained that you know whenever the you know the inputs are both one the output is one and in remaining all the cases it is zero and as a human it is very easy for me to understand that so you can see in the bottom structure how this input x1 and x2 which are my features in this case and y is my output you can see that this is actually how neural networks looks like looks scary <laughs> but let me give you a little bit of explanation on this one let me zoom into it okay so you can see on the very left most part you can see that there are x1 and x2 which are my features from the input data set also, okay, in our projects, upcoming projects, we'll also see how these X1 and X2 are prepared to be fed into the neural network. And then there is a bias. So these are my input layer. And whatever data I got, you can see these are my X1 and X2, very similar to the machine learning projects, okay. In between, 
there is something called as hidden layer okay we'll talk about it more and then in the output i'm basically trying to find out whether my output will be zero and one in this particular end gate case uh, in case of uh, say digit recognition there will be 10 outputs right it will be 0 1 2 3 up to 9 and, and many other projects can be formulated that way what happens in between this input layer and output layers are put inside a something called as hidden layer here you can see it's the enters operation which is a summation operation plus an activation of function don't get scared with this we'll explain each and everything in our upcoming series and videos and projects we'll explain each and everything all these calculations are put inside something called as layers okay now if you have more and more complex things so we'll have more and more layers but in this particular case where it is only an end gate we are good with a single hidden layer okay and what does this layer basically does you must have already familiar with machine learning that you know it takes an input which is nothing but the input features multiplied with the weight vector right so in this case you can see x1 dot b1 plus x2 dot b2 plus the bias term now what happens is we pass this uh, input, right, this summation, whatever we got, we pass it to an activation function. An activation function basically acts like a filter and it says that if it goes beyond some value, then I will give a 1. And basically here we are using a sigmoid, so we can say it's a 1 if it goes beyond certain value. And if it is less than certain value, then we are going to give a 0 or minus 1. Now. Uh, in the in particular sigmoid it is 0 and 1 there can be other activation functions which goes from minus 1 to 1 and so on and we'll accordingly see in our projects right okay so this is all about neural networks <laughs> okay the project is over <laughs> okay just kidding so basically in uh, neural networks we'll have an input layer we'll have single or several hidden layers and then we'll have an output layer the main interesting story lies between how do we figure out these hidden layers and that's what we are going to see, we are going to understand and we will also see how to implement this in Python and including TensorFlow and Keras. So I hope this will make, give you some excitement to learn about neural networks. So please stay tuned and subscribe to our channel to learn more and more about neural networks. And as always, have a nice day.